Hey you guys, today we are at Fort Scott, Kansas at Fort Scott and it is a military base. I think it was built in 1842. Um, I, I'll check that out, but we're here and we're checking this out today. So come on, let's go check it out. First, I am sorry for using the phrase check it out three times in that intro. And second, yes, Fort Scott was established in 1842. The U.S. Army established Fort Scott as a military outpost in April of 1842. This was then just an unsettled frontier. Just east was the new state of Missouri and west was unorganized Indian land. The fort was built here to guard the new military road from Fort Leavenworth south into what is now Oklahoma, as well as to protect the permanent Indian frontier. The fort was abandoned in 1853 because by then the permanent Indian frontier idea had been forgotten and the need for military aid was much further west. And this was just the beginning of this fort's history. There is so much to see here. You guys, I was here nearly four hours, so this video may be a little bit longer than normal. I've added chapters in case you want to jump around, but be sure and join me for the two officers' quarters because they were both incredibly interesting in their own ways. We're starting in the hospital building, and it was one of the first buildings built in 1843, and it's been restored, and a lot has happened here in the past 179 years, and by looking at these photos, I'm amazed it survived. This building now houses a visitor center and a gift shop, and this building has one exhibit upstairs. It's a reconstructed hospital ward from the 1840s. Admission to this National Historic Site is free, but not all buildings are open to the public, but the majority are. One of the things that I've learned in visiting historical sites like this that are connected to the military is that the majority of soldiers did not die from injuries sustained on the battlefield, but of disease. And while illness and injury were constant threat to soldiers, no soldier was killed in battle while they were stationed here. Well, it looks all nice and quaint with six beds in here and stuff, but I bet there were more beds in here. 30 stars on the flag. Oh, yeah, because probably at that time there were only 30 states. Interesting. And that's the hospital. That's the building we were just in. All right, let's go check out the barracks. Many of the original buildings were destroyed, but in 1979, what buildings were left were transferred to the National Park Service. They restored the remaining buildings and reconstructed many of the lost buildings, including this infantry barracks. And as we visit each building, I will be sure to let you know if it's original or reconstructed. All right, so this is really interesting. This is the soldiers barracks behind me. And during the bleeding Kansas era, this was a hotel for pro-slavery settlers. And across the parade ground, right behind me, that was a free state hotel. So how did they get along this close together? Well, there's some steep stairs, look at that. This building is a reconstruction. The original building was built in 1844, and this was home to the infantry soldiers, and about 50 enlisted men would have lived here. During the 1850s, it became the Western Hotel, and that was the pro-slavery hotel I was talking about, and this building contains a museum that, for time's sake, we're skipping. We are now at the Dragoon Barracks, and the Dragoons were mounted infantry. The barracks contained a company office, kitchen, mess hall, and laundry. The second floor was the sleeping quarters, but they had a water leak and there's some damage, so we can't go up there. Next door is the reconstructed Dragoon stables that housed 80 horses, their feed, tack, and hay. And these buildings have been reconstructed from the original 1843 buildings. A Dragoon private was paid $8 a month and an infantry private $7. This barracks was occupied by the 1st Dragoons Company A. 
and soldiers were issued no pillows and they slept two to a bed sleeping head to toe. Regulations required that these soldiers bathe once a week and wash their feet twice a week. Well, thank goodness for that. Each one of these barracks at Fort Scott would have had their own mess hall and kitchen and mealtime was designated by the post commander and was signaled by a bugle call or a drum roll. A typical noon meal consisted of rice soup, dried vegetables, and a small piece of boiled beef served with bread. The soldiers were encouraged to hunt and there was a company vegetable garden. This is the company office and at full strength each company consisted of 50 privates divided into four squads with two buglers and one blacksmith. The captain commanded the company and was assisted by two to four lieutenants, four sergeants, and four corporals. In this office all the company reports, records, duty rosters, roles, and work details were prepared, posted, and maintained. One room in each one of the barracks served as a company laundry. Laundresses lived here and washed the uniforms of the soldiers. Each company was allowed to employ four laundresses who were paid a fixed rate by the piece or the month. Dues owed a laundress were settled on payday and were given preference by all amounts owed by the soldier except for military indebtedness. Laundresses were subject to army regulations and received quarters, fuel, and one daily ration. These are the officers' quarters, and they were built between 1844 and 1845. The surviving houses are original, and their exteriors have been restored to the appearance of the 1840s and 1850s. They are duplexes, and each side contains six rooms plus hallways arranged on three levels with ample space for one officer, his family, and servants. There were originally four complete sets of officers' quarters here at Fort Scott. Of these, two and a half are still standing, but only one half is furnished as an officer's quarters. All right, let's go see how the officers lived. Okay, this is, we're coming in the bottom floor. Staircase up. All right, this looks like the parlor. Here's the toilet. They have the toilet right here in the parlor. Oh, thank goodness for modern plumbing. This is a really big hallway. Don't you find this a big hallway? I think it's a big hall. Look, like this is huge. This just goes to the stairs. I can't even. I mean, it's it's huge. I wonder what they would have. I wonder what this would have been. Would this have been storage? I mean, what what would they have used this for? I mean, this is this is huge up here. Hmm, this looks like the kitchen. Apparently, it was difficult to find and keep female servants, so officers hired soldiers as servants for their families. They were called strikers, and they could earn between $5 and $10 a month, and they were relieved of some of their routine duties. The striker was not allowed to cook for himself, but was allowed to eat from the officer's table after the officers were through. He was a butler as well as a cook and a housekeeper. All right, I'm going to go upstairs to the first floor again a huge huge hallway i mean it is just a massive hallway oh 
the dining room. This home was the private residence of Captain Thomas Swords, who was the post quartermaster from 1842 to 1846, and it's been refurbished to illustrate their lifestyle and social position, which officers were expected to maintain. Most of the officers and their wives came from wealthy families in the East and the South, and they brought as many trappings of the Eastern culture as they could, and they continued to live the lifestyle to which they were accustomed to the full extent possible. The parlor adjoins the dining room and these two rooms were not used on a daily basis but rather for formal entertaining and dinners. Two bedrooms are upstairs with the kitchen and sitting room downstairs. The sitting room was used for informal daily activities, meals, reading, sewing, and relaxation. Stairs to the bedrooms, that's right. This is a steep staircase. I wouldn't want to have to walk up and down this in a big old long flowy dress. I would fall because I'm klutzy and clumsy. When the fort was abandoned in 1853, this building was sold at public auction and it became the Fort Scott or the Free State Hotel. Oh, look at this little baby chair. It's just a room, but <laughs> what was it used for? Let's go check out this room. Oh yeah, this is definitely the master. There was a definite hierarchy here. The officers and their wives lived on the top of the social ladder at Fort Scott, and it was considered beneath them to socialize with the laundresses or the enlisted men. They were so important that enlisted men could not walk on the pathways in front of the officers' quarters. And another door. This one's got a different hole in it. Let's go check it out. Same thing, just a room. What was it used for? Okay, all right, what was this used for? It's got a hole in it, look at that hole. And then there's that one as well. Like, it's got a little hole. That looks more like outhouse like door, but I don't think that this was a two bedroom, two bath. Look, here's another one that's open. Well, then we're gonna go check and see what this barrack looks like. This is an officer's house. Oh, look, this tells us how it was built. This is another officer's quarters that was restored. It was built in 1845, so this house has survived for nearly 180 years. After the army abandoned the fort, this building was sold at auction in 1855 for $300. In 1901, it became the Goodlander home for children, and the two duplexes were opened up to form one house. From 1959 until 1979, it was made to fit a local civic group which which used the building for meetings. Then in 1979, the building was transferred to the National Park Service, and this building reflects each period of change. There are 64 items to look at in this house, but we're not gonna look at them all because that would take way too much time. So we're just gonna poke around. This is the kitchen area and it's stripped down. And just for comparison, this is what the kitchen looked like in the other officer's quarters. Drip down fireplace. Oh, even better. Look at that linoleum. Can you see that? Said 
this was added and it's just a little pass through and it looks like there's some another closet painted green they're all painted green let's check this one out is it green too yep green and that was the original pantry of the 1840s and we're gonna head into the other side of the duplex through here this was added this wasn't here originally because this was two duplexes two separate separate areas okay where do we start let's start over here okay that was a closet that was added let's go see is it painted green on the inside it is and this is the original fireplace that is definitely original let's get a, a good look at that gosh can you imagine how many fires have been built there how many people have warmed themselves how many meals were cooked over that fire just kind of cool to think about I think that is camouflage linoleum. Yep, pretty sure. Oh my. Oh well, that was the taste, I suppose, back whenever it was put down. All right, we were over at the bottom right now. We are over on the other side on the middle floor. And again, look at this big hallway. It's huge. Oh my, what we got going on in here? Ooh, look at that fireplace. That is really pretty. That is the original mantle with Doric columns. Very, very pretty. And then that is a closet that was added. Let's see, are they green here? <laughs> yes. They're green. How far we can get I don't think we're gonna be able to go all the way to the top but and they have it blocked so you can't go all the way up to there which is where the bedrooms would have originally been yeah I'm pretty sure this is the bakery bakehouse, bakehouse. okay bakehouse bakery bakehouse cool stone building Let's get on in here out of the wind. Oh, so much better. Oh, look at this. This bakehouse is original and was completed in 1848. ounces of bread is that what they got I think that son I just passed said they got 18 ounces of bread to eat a day oh they all took their turn baking bread one baker was expected to turn out 200 loaves per baking enough to supply a two company post for two days Oh, have we found the bathrooms? Is this a latrine? Yep. Enlisted men's latrine. This foundation, discovered by archaeologists in 1971, is all that remains of one of Fort Scott's latrines. A wash house used for bathing was attached to the left. This latrine and wash house served enlisted men living in the infantry barracks in front of you, which typically housed about 50 men. Officers would not have used this latrine. As one of the many privileges of rank, they would have had privacy of latrines in their own backyards. 
which is that's their building right there you can see that that's them right there they got the nice ones we're making our way to the quartermaster storehouse now the quartermaster was the officer responsible for supplying the fort with everything it needed to run smoothly he was assisted by a sergeant and one or two clerks and most of his operation took place in an area called the quartermaster complex the complex contained a storehouse which we are going to go take a look at it also had a bakery an ice house corral scale house store yards and a large rectangular quadrant consisting of a carpenter, blacksmith, corn cribs, grain bins, and a stable for oxen and mules. Of the original structures, only the quartermaster storehouse, bakehouse, and one other stone building, which was probably a blacksmith shop, survived. The quartermaster storehouse at Fort Scott was constructed from 1842 to 1843. Check out this building. Gosh, so many buildings to go in. This is the storeroom. Wagons would bring provisions of coffee, sugar, salt, molasses, flour, bacon, salted pork, salted beef, whiskey, vinegar, candles, and soap. And it all had to be stored in this storeroom. The quartermaster was responsible for all the provisions and he was held responsible if any of the food went bad. Captain Thomas Swords, whose quarters we just saw, was the quartermaster from 1842 to 1846, and he was largely responsible for building this fort. He left in 1846 to become the quartermaster of the Army of the West. Quite a promotion. This is the only fort building that has a basement, and perishable items like vegetables, candles, and soap would have been stored down here to prevent them from spoiling in the heat. Ooh, we, and this smells like a basement. <laughs> wow. It smells like a cave, actually. Mm. Wow, it's kind of cold, cool, moist down here. It smells like a cave. You guys, check out this floor. That is amazing. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it is green, like there's algae or something on it. Wow, this is pretty cool. I know this looks like a restroom at a park, but this is the guardhouse, and it functioned as a jail for soldiers who had violated military law and as a shelter for the guards who were on guard duty. They were assigned 24 hours straight and would generally patrol for two hours and then rest for four hours and so on. It was a rare soldier who was not at some time punished for some infraction of the rules. Punishment for minor offenses included reduction in rank, stopping of pay, or confinement in the guardhouse. Punishment for more severe crimes ranged from mounting a wooden horse called a sawbuck, carrying a log, standing on a barrel, carrying a ball and chain, flogging, or solitary confinement. So when they were on guard duty, this was so they could lay down. I think the sign said they got four hours that they could rest on here. Let me see that again. Four hours off. Yeah. So they had four hours off and that's where they would that's where they would try to get some sleep. That doesn't look too comfortable, but I suppose if you, you know, put a couple blankets, like you know, some fluffy quilts and some pillows you could do it oh wow confinement for 
Confinement was for minor infractions. Desertion warranted a more serious punishment. Deserters were usually stripped of insignia, branded with a D, drummed out of the regiment, and sent out into the surrounding country to fend for themselves as best they could. I mean, it's kind of what they wanted. They didn't want to be there anymore, so you just did them a favor, except for the branding. Okay, and aside from that one, looks like there are three other cells. Oh, let's go check this one out. This is what they call a light cell because it had that little light up there at the top. Pretty tall ceilings, but very, very cramped in here. So I don't know if you can see, it's really hard to get a good size in here, but this is pretty small space. And I'm just standing right here in the middle. You can see I'll just twirl around. And I bet it would have been really cold. And the only light was this one right here. That was it. That door to your right is what they called a dark cell because it had no window. And this is another light cell. These cells were unheated and they provided no furniture and no sanitary facilities. Those buckets we saw, they were for that purpose. Fort Scott is one of over 390 parks in the National Park System. To learn more about National Parks and National Park Service programs in America's communities, visit www.nps.gov. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to hit that like button, and I will see you all next week. Bye now.